Hi everyone and welcome to this Easter Sunday edition of The Crows Show brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith. Yes, we hope you're enjoying the Easter break wherever you are. Over the next half hour, we'll learn a little more about the players and coaches at the Adelaide Football Club. And Mark, we're already four rounds in and it's shaping as a very exciting season. So coming up in today's show... We'll join Ryan O'Keefe as he takes charge of the Crows Sandful team for their first game. They're not super high, but what they rely on is putting pressure on and for us to fumble the ball and then they're really good on that spillage ball. And the luck of the draft, how two mates finished up together at Westlakes. But first, a new season inevitably brings with it a new rule. This year, the AFL banned the third man up in the ruck and the move seems to be working to the advantage of big man Sam Jacobs, who's been in great form. So, how has he adapted to the change and what does it mean for other players around stoppages? <laughs> Jacob just confirming on the designated ruck. I haven't found the ruck rule to be too different um, for us as we're not a big team that uses third man up anyway in the past. So um, for me, things hasn't changed too much. Other teams are probably affects them more than us. Um, as I guess always, you know, I've probably been the one just going one-on-one. -on -one. So from our point of view, it probably hasn't changed too much. Probably hasn't made a huge difference uh, around the midfield contest. Uh, there's been a few teams that have tried to exploit the rule and uh, and obviously Grigg for, for Richmond got the, got the goal the other night, which uh, created a bit of controversy. Really good one-on-one, -on -one, the contest, both kept their feet, and that was the key. Block, Ruckman. Yeah. See, Greg was the Ruckman again. There, he's the Ruckman. He put his hand up as a Ruckman. I call him the Ruckman. That's a lovely, lovely, lovely goal. So just uh, left of your screen here, Sean Griggson nominated Ruckman against uh, Jesse White and he's just been blocked there. After the Grigg incident, there was a heightened awareness and therefore it's basically just having an awareness, asking, you know, asking the question from the umpire, who's rucking? And then, and then treat him as another opponent because uh, even though they might be you know, uh, five foot five instead of six foot five, they're still capable of uh, competing. Rioli does the ruck work. Obviously he was the designated ruck. It's really interesting watching other teams, um, I guess, try and stretch the rules as far as they can go. Um, Hawthorne are always a team that, I guess, try to exploit stuff, which is, which is great because it keeps the game going forward and, and you get different looks. But um, again, against Hawthorne, Rioli ended up going against the ruck when I thought I was going against Vickery, which, which changes it up. But um, you know, I, think it's, I think it's good when teams try and, I guess, find loopholes to, to you know, try and progress the game. There it is. Yeah, Rioli's put his hand up. Yeah, right. Yeah. So anyone can nominate uh, Jacob, and they, they fooled Jacobs on, on that yeah. occasion. We're going to start seeing some tricks. I mean, we did some analysis on it, and the outcome when teams jumped third up wasn't particularly good. So we felt, you know, our rucks held up pretty well. But it, obviously, if you've got someone jumping, they're not at ground level. Yeah, it has been a real positive start to the year. Um, I'm not not too sure yet. I guess once we get more of a sample size, I'll, I'll probably know more whether um, it has helped me or not. But at the early stage, it probably has. You know, hopefully it does go to my advantage and, and help me throughout the year. Source turned 28 last Monday, so fortunately for the Crows, he still has a few good seasons left in him yet. Ryan O'Keefe's career has taken another turn with him being appointed coach of the Crows Sandful team. Ryan allowed us into a team meeting before the round one clash with Sturt to see how he goes about the job. The strength of us is we can go first wave, whack. Then we bring in the next wave, whack, next wave, whack. When Pikey asked if I wanted to be the head coach for our uh, state league team, I was, I was wrapped. I was really, uh, really pleased to take, to take on the role. We've got a young side, very young side this year, so there's a lot of, uh, lot of development needed and it, it's been great. You know, our young players have got this thirst to learn and, and get better and if I can help them fast track their AFL career, it's um, something I'll be very proud of. We want to try and win every game that we step foot on. That's our, that's our sole goal um, and creating a winning culture and winning habits is, is a critical part of our development. Pretty even head of the ball so let's get it going, get it deep. If we can go inside, hit the 45 and get a handball received, bang, we'll, we'll break through their, their defence. I think I'm you know, a, a, a pretty, pretty strict and firm coach but fair so I think I you know, want 
players to get the best out of themselves, but that just requires effort. If they put in effort to me and, and have a go, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that aspect of it. I think that competitive streak never dies out. Um, once a competitor, always a competitor. And that's what I want for my players. As long as they get out and compete and give effort, that's what make me happy. They're not super high, but what they rely on is putting pressure on and for us to fumble the ball, and then they're really good on that spillage ball. It's a bit of development for me as well, not just developing the players, but developing me and, and um, with uh, Nathan and, and Paul as my assistants to help develop them as, as coaches in, in their coaching journey. So, yeah, I think this year is going to be a lot of ups and downs. I'm going to make a few mistakes and I've got to make sure I'll be patient and, and prepared to, to slowly build these, these younger players up. But hopefully it's going to be big learning for me, not just the players. Ryan was a dual premiership player with the Swans, so he certainly has a wealth of experience to pass on to the younger Crows. Stay with us. When Alana returns after the break, we'll go off-road with mods. Oh, no. And a testing time in the Crows' kitchen. Welcome back. Well, Tony Modra has always been a bit of a country boy at heart and probably fancies himself driving off road. So what better place to put him than behind the wheel of the Toyota Hilux and over a challenging four wheel drive course at Saunders Gorge outside Adelaide. Afterwards, we'll compare his time with other past and present players. You know what, I, I haven't done this sort of thing before, so it was good to um, get taught by the professionals. I guess it was probably handy having Jamo go first so I could get to see the track so I knew which of the hard points and whatever. He was telling me to slow down a few times, but I never said that to him, but I suppose I didn't need to, he was going that slow. <laughs> Not a bad effort, Mods, but Dougie remains the one to catch. Now, draftees Jordan Gallucci and Miles Paholke are still finding their way at the club, but we saw enough of them in the pre-season competition to realise they've got great potential. Many fans may not realise that they were actually mates before they arrived at West Lakes. So, what is their connection? And how did they find out they were both headed to the Crows? So I was a late induction into the AFL Academy and uh, Jordan was obviously already in that so um, I had to quickly find myself a friendship group and that was sort of who I mixed in with. He was one of the new boys in the second year um, and yeah I guess all the boys got around him and I think we just clicked from the start, personalities got along and it was good. I was a part of about four camps which included two games and a trip to America so um, it's a lot of time to get to know each other and become pretty close. Yeah. Well, the Adelaide Crows have chosen Miles Mahogany. Obviously, it was a bit longer wait for me than, than Jordan, so um, when it was my turn, I completely forgot that he'd even got drafted to Adelaide, and then one of my mates sort of came to me when I sort of calmed myself down and sort of said, oh, Jordan got drafted to Adelaide as well. Jordan Gallucci from Eastern Rangers Football Club. 
I was actually at the back doing some media stuff with the Crows and I'm feeling my phone vibrate and I look at it after the, all the stuff's done. It was Miles calling me and saying, look, we've both been drafted to Adelaide and it was just, yeah, there was a few tears from him. Nice, gave each other the old excitement levels and um, yeah, we couldn't wait to get started. Gordon Gallucci to try and profit for the Crows. Obviously moving into state was a big thing, um, but knowing one of your mates is there with you the whole way. And I suppose having that familiar face and someone that you're already really close with, um, I suppose you can sort of build friendships together and go about training together. Uh, obviously pre-season they don't tell you it's tough for no reason. Uh, we found out pretty quickly that you know it's, it's really tough. Obviously a massive um, opportunity, something I'm very grateful for um, to get that opportunity through the, uh, the JLT series. So yeah, definitely whets the appetite and hopefully I'll get another taste this year. boys will soon celebrate their 19th birthday. Jordan next month and then Miles in July. We certainly wish them well in their careers at the Crows. Now all players have to watch what they eat so you'd think they'd know a bit about food. Let's venture into the Crows kitchen as Daniel Talia puts Andy Otten to an ingredients test. All thanks to Thomas Farms. So I've got a family pleaser chicken salad with Chinese sesame dressing here. We've got a lot of ingredients in here, only five of them correct. We're going to bring Otto in and see which ones he can guess. We've got Otto here today. I mean, he's going to have a look at this photo and see if he can guess the ingredients. All right, give us a look. Let's see how well he knows his food here. All right. I'm not backing him in. Open right. it up. Here we go. So we've got our beautiful fresh ingredients. All right. I'm going to have rule out the pasta. I reckon we got some lettuce in there as a salad. Yep, some cod lettuce, that's correct. So that's one. All right, definitely some red cabbage I saw in there. Yep, that's two. Um, definitely saw some shredded carrot. That's three, you're going three. pretty well. Um, there's got to be garlic. No. No, garlic. that's one out. All right. Um, some celery, some celery in there, I reckon. Celery? Yep. yep. Yes, that's four out of Jeez, five. Jeez, I'm going all right. You're going pretty well. Um, lastly. I think I gave you too much of a look at the photo. <laughs> I got cherry tomatoes in my last guest. No, that's oh. wrong. That's wrong. Is it seasoning? Might be a seasoning. A bit of yeah. sesame oil, maybe. Goes Sesame, on top. sesame oil. Oh, <laughs> well done. Oh, yeah, no, I'm a star, yeah. mate. He's guessed Chef. all five. Thanks, Otto, for doing this, mate. I've no tried worries, to get you out. I didn't think you'd get all five, but you're a bit too good for me. Too much of a chef. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Still ahead in our Easter Sunday Crow Show, Troy Menzel feels the heat from Brody Smith. You played against your brother for the first time the other week. Who played better? Um, Andy played a half, so I'm going to say me by default. And the former Crow, who's just as fit as ever. Every team needs a funny man or practical joker and Brody Smith is made for the role. He enjoys nothing more than giving his teammates a one minute grilling thanks to Revolution Roofing. This time it's Troy Menzel's turn to come up with the quick answer. Welcome to the Victory Veranda Hot Seat. This week we've got Troy Menzel. Welcome Troy. Thanks Brody. Alright, start off easy. Where were you born? Uh, in Adelaide. Yep. And the AFL club you supported growing up? Uh, Collingwood Magpies, surprisingly. Collingwood, why? My whole family liked Adelaide and I just wanted to be different. Which player at the club thinks they're the funniest? Yourself. <laughs> Getting that. Uh, who's actually the funniest? Cole Cheney. Boots, bright or black? You mix it up a little bit. Yeah, bit of both. Bit of bright with the black. Which player eats the most at the club? Riley O'Brien. <laughs> if you could pick one player to take a set shot after the siren, who would it be? I'd probably have to go with Eddie. Stingiest player at the club? Either Tom Duday or Paul Hunter. If you could be a professional at any other sport, what would it be? Either golf or tennis. Reason being? Um, play tennis growing up and love playing golf and it would be awesome to travel the world and mm. play golf. You played against your brother for the first time the other week. Who played better? Um, Andy played a half, so I'm going to say me by default. Yeah, and who is better? <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> and if you could beat anyone else in the world, who would it be? Conor McGregor. Jeez, why? Just love what he does. Fair enough. All right, thanks for joining us, Menzel. Thank you. Most players find a way to stay active after their playing days are over. Former Crow Chris Massey, for example, is still in excellent shape. 
He owns a personal training business and spruiks healthy lifestyle choices. First kicks to a big contest. Oh, great mark by Massey. Chris Massey is realistic when he reflects on his 10-year AFL career with Carlton, then Adelaide. I was never, you know, one of the first 5, 10, 15 pick. That was pretty obvious. But the ability to just keep going and attempting to find a way and keep improving and learning the craft, seeking feedback from coaches, and being somewhat resilient and persistent, that's what I'm, what I'm proud of when I look back. For a decade now, Chris has been a strong advocate of a healthy lifestyle, stemming from his own experience with chronic fatigue syndrome in 2002. It was a pivotal moment in the sense that I took a step back as a 21 year old and reviewed what I was doing in simple terms, what I'm doing day to day, week to week, from a habits point of view, from a health perspective, isn't working. Overcoming the illness left him with the passion to ultimately set up his own business. So the key driver and the key why for, for me personally, I went through a chronic ordinary health phase. To prevent that in others or to help those that are in chronic stages is a real why and a motivator. He conducts nutritional workshops, personal training and counselling to improve both physical and emotional health. It's about refuelling, um, it's about, dare I say, loving themselves and what they want to expand on. And obviously the fitness side is an avenue or a transformational tool to do that. Chris was delisted in 2008, but didn't join the Past Players Association for some years. It wasn't until, dare I say, when Phil took the reins as coach, where I sensed there were some real shifts and changes, that's the truth, from an authentic space. Um, I just felt there was some real honesty about the way the club was going about its work. And I thought, I'd love to be involved in some capacity. Interestingly, Chris was born in Sweden and moved to Melbourne with his mother when he was just two years old. Keep watching, you could be our face in the crowd. And we'll look at a couple of highlights from social media. We know that social media is an ever-increasing part of our lives and joining the Crows on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram will ensure you get exclusive insights and breaking news every day. So let's take a look at Crow Chauffeur, an initiative with Toyota where Tony Modra picks up a club member and drives them to the game. Well, I'm Tony, so I'm your Toyota chauffeur for today. <laughs> so I reckon you guys can give me a hand on where to go from here to get that laid over. I reckon you've been there before. Yeah. No doubt reminiscing about his goal scoring feats along the way. And how good is this from Rory Sloan, helping young fan Jess as she battles with brain cancer. Best wishes from all of us to you, Jess. And now let's find our face in the crowd this week. So many in their crow's colours. Let's say if we settle on you. If you recognise yourself, contact the club before 5pm next Wednesday. Be ready with some photo ID and you'll receive a merchandise pack. It's as easy as that. That just about wraps up our show, brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. Now be sure you're watching next week when we look at the never-ending job of finding the next generation of Crow stars. So come Tuesday, we'd have anywhere between 150 and 200 reports filtering through to uh, Hamish and myself to uh, keep an eye on the talent uh, around Australia. Don't forget, you can catch up with all the latest news on the club's website, afc.com.au. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the rest of the Easter break. We look forward to your company again next Sunday at 11.30 on 7. Bye for now. We'll see you then.